Okay, it's Thursday on Greenbelt. I attended a, a sustainability update session on Lead for Healthcare. Um, the, the, it was an hour-long session, and they only talked for half an hour. And I missed the first 10 minutes because I guess I can't tell time. Um, so I missed a th full third of the presentation. But from what I got, uh, when I got there, was that they were just going through the major differences between Lead for New Construction and Lead for Healthcare. And I wouldn't bore you all with going through the, the point by point of all the differences uh, in this video. Anyway, there are some differences and some new prerequisites. Uh, I would recommend that you uh, go to the website, usdbc.org, under lead, under healthcare, and there's a comparison between the lead, uh, building, uh, lead for new construction rating system and the lead for healthcare, and it tells you what the differences are. There's some new prerequisites um, and some just things that are generally different and apply to, uh, apply to healthcare. You can also uh, now purchase the Lead for Healthcare Reference Guide. In future versions, it will be incorporated into the BDNC uh, Reference Guide, so it'll all be one. But right now, uh, since it came out, you know, after the Lead for 2009 Reference Guides were issued, you have to buy that Reference Guide separately. Um, one thing that uh, they did talk about is the Lead Pilot Credit Library, which a lot of people aren't familiar with. Uh, there are basically um, lead pilot credits, these are credits that are testing out to be used in future editions, and there's about 49 or 50 of them right now, and this isn't just a healthcare thing, but it's uh, uh, any lead rating system, just most of them are related to healthcare. If you attempt one of the pilot credits, you can use that for an innovation point in your project. You don't actually have to achieve the credit, you just have to try really, really hard to get it and document you know, how you did and why you did it or didn't do it. Um, so that's a possible innovation point. Uh, there was one good, uh, some good questions from, from people in the audience, and that did fill, fill up the rest of the time. Um, questions about the differentiation between patients and staff and how those are handled as, as FTEs. What I thought was funny was that the, the, the people on the panel uh, basically had two answers for most of the questions. That was either to look in the reference guide, which they did apologize for saying that later, or to submit a, a CIR. And that kind of sucks, but I understand what they're getting at. It's new, and there's a lot of good questions, and um, uh, one of the questions was, what if you're doing a, uh, not a whole building renovation, but just a partial renovation of a wing or a floor, which is what a lot of healthcare facilities do, and they said, yeah, we don't know what to do about that other than it's not going to be lead for healthcare or lead for new construction for that matter if you're not impacting the envelope or the mechanical systems. Uh, it's really a lead CI type project, but then there's certain rules for that. So uh, they admitted that lead for healthcare is really targeted at new healthcare facilities and major renovation projects, but certainly uh, certainly better than not having anything anything at all.